Hello, today I'm talking to Lisa Thompson, who's the CEO of Purpose HR. Hello, Lisa, how are you? Hi, Paul. Good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks. Very good. Um, could you just as a quick starter, give us sort of a one minute intro to, to you and Purpose HR and, and your growth story? Sure. Um, I've founded Purpose HR eight years ago now, and essentially we provide the full functions of an HR or people department to grow in businesses that don't actually yet have in-house resource, or sometimes they may have in-house resource, but they need additional support um, for projects or at the growth needs that they have. We work mainly with scaling companies in technology, engineering and life sciences, we're also expanding that into other sectors. And last July, we were acquired by Anderson Anderson Brown, um, which is a large business services and accountancy firm. So we are now a group company within the LLP group. Fantastic! Yeah, it's a great uh, it's a great story. Now I know because I've known you for a little while that you're passionate about client listening and the value it can bring to the business. But how, where do you, where do you see the value in terms of how it adds to what you're doing? We've been a client for number of years now and for us the value of listening to our clients and having a tool like this to do it it's really helped as we've scaled the business so when I first started the business I delivered services personally and I was in touch almost every day with all my clients obviously as we've grown um, we've more than tripled the size of the team in the last three years and our client portfolio has grown to nearly 70 different clients with different points of contact in each of those clients so as you can imagine it's no longer feasible to just be picking up the phone or emailing with back and forth with points of contact in each client um you know on a regular basis so i was very keen that we never lose that ethos of being in regular contact and having sight of the client experience the service because that's absolutely a usp for purpose HR, we pride ourselves on being very client focused. Empathy is one of our core values as a business, and we see ourselves as acting as an extension of our clients' team rather than a service provider. So, having access to regular structured feedback in a way that we can get a real understanding of any challenges, issues, and find proactive ways that we can then take that on board, address it, and build on it, replicate success where it's working well. Or address issues when they're small or a niggle before it becomes a bigger problem it's really really important to me and to the business and uh how how does that work for your team as well so do they see the same value i can see how you're also sort of looking top down at it do, yeah. does the team see that too yeah absolutely i mean i think there was a bit of a comms process that we went through when we rolled out the tool it was really important for me you know one of our other core values is trust and I really wanted the team to be on board with this and understand look it's not me checking up on you it's not going behind your back you know to, to speak to the clients it's about that transparency and visibility and actually every piece of feedback that comes in through the tool the team are, are that's shared with them too so that they have sight of it um, and it's really important that they're actually using that to say ah that's good great suggestion I'm going to use that to move it forward so each of our consultants as we grow and they now have their own small portfolios of clients that they're responsible for so in the way that, that I look at it they're actually looking at that feedback across their own team and their portfolio of clients as well and really seeing the value of it and particularly as we've grown out the, the process being able to look back over a series of quarters look for trends look for any common themes emerging is really valuable wow that's that's fantastic i can see a lot of firms kind of aspiring to that particularly having everyone buying into wanting to see the feedback that continuous improvement um what sort of top tips have you got to help get an organization out? i know you kind of live and breathe that personally and you've been able to kind of embed a lot of that as you've grown but for other people looking to get to that continuous improvement communication you've highlighted clearly is is one um, what else would you suggest people look at to try and get to that? I think it's really important to approach um, feedback with a willingness and openness to listen, not get defensive, <laughs> um, and, and, and actually be willing to act on feedback and, and to take it on board. And as you say, continuous improvement is important. I think a 
as well as like hours has to evolve over time our clients don't stay static their needs definitely don't stay the same it grows and develops so being able to continually revisit and think well what are we doing and what do we need to be doing now and how might that need to change and adapt in the future and really seeking their views and input to that process is, is hugely important and um, i think it's always important as well to be not just looking to say i want to score highly on everything but actually recognizing that if everything's fine are you really growing and developing with that client and what does that mean you know we want we want to find constructive areas to develop on and work on so that we can maintain that relationship of trust as as we continue to work together i i love that that's that's brilliant in terms of not just always looking for the positive because that's often the case is natural tendency to worry that anything less than perfect is is not good but I like yeah. that actually it's the growing tension that it shows you stretching yourself expanding into new areas and then therefore the, the trust is really key that people trust the fact that if there is a bit of um, variable feedback and room for improvement the team trusts that actually that's seen as a positive not yeah. a negative I think the worst thing that you can do is solicit feedback and then not act on it or or take it into account you know sometimes that you have to have a conversation but you know just acknowledging it and thanking and being grateful for that whether it's positive or negative you know and actually meaning it is, is really important people can tell whether you're authentic in that or not yeah absolutely and have you got any sort of like little practical things around kind of when you you look at some of this feedback so is it part of regular meetings or team meetings or reviews or, or anything like that? We do, yeah. I mean, as we've grown as a business, we put more structure in place in terms of our own HR practices and our own team's development and support. And this is one of the key tools that we use um, amongst other, you know, wider 360 feedback and, you know, other, other goal setting objectives. But it's really valuable to have this, um, you know, external data as something that we, that we can use um, in a simple inaccessible way yeah that's brilliant thank you well i'll uh, i'll keep you to that so I don't take up too much of your time but that's been fabulously insightful thanks thank you so much for joining us great to catch up thanks paul bye-bye hey,